Hey everyone, it's John Root. We're outside of the Macaulay Aquatic Center on the campus of Georgia Tech University. Leah Thomas is gonna be competing all weekend against biological females. We're gonna be talking to protesters from both sides. We're also gonna go indoors. It's gonna be a heck of a time. You were inside watching Leah Thomas, who we thought was gonna win the 500 free yeah. national championship. Tell us a little bit more about what was going on. Uh, yeah, he raced among a field of women competitors as a man, yep. and he absolutely won. He appeared to be actually even holding back mm -hmm. as, as we saw the women kicking and stroking hard. Uh, he seemed to be, you know, kind of just flowing through the whole thing. Uh, he seemed to have a lot of energy left at the end, and he won very handily. And it is not a surprise because he's a man who is cheating. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you cheat, you will win. And then also, I love that you guys are here too. Like, I Thank think you there's, so much. it seems like it's cordial back and forth. We got some counter protesters on the other side yeah. over here. But this is about the integrity and fairness of, of women's sports. Absolutely. And everybody tries to make it about just one athlete. This yeah. is about all the women that could be affected, not just now, but for generations to come. So tell us about how people were thinking about that inside while they watch fairness and integrity of the sport just you know, go downhill. We've we've been um, talking to people all day. We've been talking to parents. We've been talking to former competitors. Um, we've been talking to people who are just here to watch. And, you know, everyone gets it. You know, this this is about fairness. This is about bodies, you know, and our foremothers who came before us, who put Title IX in place, they put Title IX in place uh, for this fairness and safety and integrity of women's bodies based on our sex. You know, we didn't fight for Title IX to have a lady identity team. Mm -hmm. You know, these teams that we created for ourselves, that women did the hard work to put in place for ourselves, those were never put in place on behalf of our identities. They were put in place on behalf of our bodies. Um, you know, and everybody gets it. Everybody mm -hmm. knows, yeah. you know, it, it's it's not confusing who is a man and who is a woman. Everybody knows in their heart of hearts. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are just simply too scared to speak out. And so the reaction that we've been having from people is just their gratitude for us mm -hmm. willing, our willingness to to be here and our willingness to speak out. But the fact of the matter is we need everyone to speak out on this. We need we need everyone to state the obvious mm -hmm. plainly and clearly uh, so that, you know, the more of us that do this and, and show that, you know, we're not afraid to say what is real and true. Um, I think the more it will encourage other people to speak out because, you know, everyone who passed us by was just like, you know, we get it. We get it. Thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you for doing something. But we're just people, you know, we I don't have superhuman powers. Yeah. I, I'm just a person who's standing up for what is fair and right and everyone has that capacity and and so we're we're here to really um uh, show up for the women and we're also here to encourage other people to pretty much do what we're doing stand up because why do you think the ncaa allowed this because it's now having to play defense a little bit it seems like they they allowed this and then now we're at this place where i mean You've already kind of lost a little bit of the fairness in the sport. Yeah. You literally just had your very first yep. transgender athlete win a national championship. Yeah. And I hope it doesn't go this way, but this could be, when we look back on history, the spark that lit the fire that just ruined women's sports. Yeah. Why did the NCAA allow this in well, the first place? I think it's because of pretty much language like you just used. Um, you know, there is this notion that there is such a thing as, um, you know, a trans person. And I look at it as like, mm -hmm. a, like a goth person or a, an Aquarius person or a Scientology person. You know, every human being on the planet is a fully embodied, wholly sexed being. Yeah. Everyone on the planet is a man or a woman, including those, you know, I know these uh, activists always try to bring up uh, intersex or DSD conditions as they're called. Even people with, <laughs> disorders of sexual development mm -hmm. are still either male or female. Everyone on the planet is a man or a woman. And so I think a lot of the language and the sloganeering and the propaganda around this issue um, has made everyone, it's pulled on everyone's heartstrings in the way yeah. that, that it was organized to do. You know, so people, you know, have compassion misplaced for, you know, quote unquote, trans people. Well, there are men and women, you know, and my compassion is accurately placed on the side of women. And when we ultimately choose to privilege men's identity claims mm -hmm. over women's lived physical reality that is sexism <laughs> you know and I think yeah, that's what yeah, we're forgetting yeah. um, that that's sexism in action so yeah this could very well be the downfall of women's sports as it exists and I think that um, there's been a lot of ultimately engineered 
propaganda around this using language like trans language, um, using language like inclusivity, you know, and or, equity and equity. Yeah, um, yeah. But the fact of the matter is um, inclusivity of men in women's sports. That is a wedge, you know, that is a word wedge boundary violation. Inclusivity for, of men being included in women's sports comes at the direct expense um, of, of women's boundaries around our bodies. So that that these words are organized to trick our minds and to pull on our heartstrings. But the fact of the matter is, women's sports are exclusive. They are exclusively ours. <laughs> they are not meant to be inclusive of everyone. It's not a third grade birthday party. <laughs> it's a competition, you know. And and men are rightly excluded uh, for reasons of fairness for reasons of safety and for frankly reasons of privacy in the locker room you know these these poor women at Penn State have been crying to their their coaches crying to their schools that they are being flashed by a man yeah. in the locker room who is flaunting his penis and they yeah. don't want to see it they are not comfortable you know and ultimately the world is telling them no you don't deserve boundaries around your bodies and we are here to say yes they do all right, tell me about your guys' side of the conversation here, because I know I've talked to them over there, and it seems like their idea is that they want to save women's sports and the integrity of, of women's sports. So a swimmer that's going to go from three years on the women's team or on the men's team and switch over to the women's team doesn't seem to be fair, but tell me a little bit more about what you guys are doing here on this side. So we're just here to say that Georgia Tech supports trans women in sports that trans women are women, trans men are men, and they should be able to compete with other women and men. And we want to show um, anyone who might be watching this who is coming to terms with their identity that you're not alone, that we love you, and it's not just hate that you hear out there. We're also here supporting you. Do you feel like there's a biological advantage that Leah has over the other swimmers in there? I feel like if I jumped in that pool right now, a lot of the women would have a biological advantage over me. <laughs> but specifically Leah. I think that Leah is competing in a college swimming uh, competition as a woman, as she should. And if she wins, then good for her. So on your side of the aisle, then, would you say that anybody that was going from uh, whatever amount of time on the men's team, they can switch over to the women's team at any point, And that's good as long as they feel like they, they're a woman now. We believe that, um, or I'll speak for myself, I believe that trans women are women and women should compete with women since there's two categories right now. So right now then, would you believe that there's two genders? Um, I don't agree with that, no. So if there's not two genders, and right now we just have two genders separating, we got men's sports and we got women's sports. You think anybody, it's how you feel. If I feel like a woman tomorrow, I can go compete in women's sports. That That's your feeling right now. If you're a woman, you should be able to compete with women. Woo! And if you're a man, you should be able to compete with men. And Leah Thomas is a woman. So tell me this. If Michael Phelps all of a sudden was saying, I, I feel like I've been a woman the whole time and I'm going to start competing at the Olympics and go against people like Katie Ledecky and that that's who I am now, that would be okay with you? I would say good for her. And then tell us about the conversations you've had with people on the other side of the aisle. Like what what's like the biggest conversation topic? Yeah, like tell us a little bit more about that. Um, I think we had a good conversation and I think at the end of the day, we all want to support everyone. No one wants to take away women's or girls' rights. Um, I'll say it again. No one wants to um, take away women's or girls' rights. We want to support trans women and their rights. And I feel like if we all work together, we could like, and depression for all people, but um, was that funny? Yeah, by oppressing women, you're not ending oppression for anyone. Okay. Um, I don't think that was a question. Do you have any more? Yeah, so I think here it's coming down to people have this simple question of what is a woman then? What would be your definition of that? I think it's different for everyone. Um, for me, uh, gender and womanhood is a spiritual thing. For someone else, it's something different. Um, that's what I have to say on that. So on their side of the aisle then, when they say that gender is a spiritual thing, then too, and breaking it down to how, maybe how God designed us, a divinely inspired two genders, that's a spiritual aspect there. How would you respond to that? Um, well, I would like to say that there are more than two genders in the Bible, but, um, I don't know if we have time to get into all of that right now. We would have a long discussion on theology about that one. I'll tell you that for sure. 
cool. But what's your plan here? Are you guys going to be here throughout the weekend? What are you guys hoping to get out of this? Yeah, so what, we're here to show other people, um, specifically trans, queer, and non-binary people, that they're not alone, that there are two sides to the argument, and that at Georgia Tech, our community embraces you, supports you, um, and we love you. So final question for you then. Okay. Let's say you have the top 25 swimmers on the men's side. You're going to have the men's swimming championships coming up. If next year they all decided that they want to be competing as women, that would be okay with you guys. Trans women are women and should compete with cis women. Yeah. But it, so that would be okay. Yeah. The best, mm -hmm. the best women should win and trans women are women. Would you mind having a little bit more of a conversation with me from earlier? If we could pick up on some of that um, around gender identity and the laws. I well, think we were talking about if you want to come in, men, come in here, if you're, if you're up for that. I was concerned about cis, cisgender men, as you call them. Yeah. And what is a cisgender man? Just so we're clear so that everybody knows what we're talking about. So we're on the same page. Um, a cisgender man is um, a man who identifies as a man and was born like biologically assigned man at birth, male at birth. And was Leah Thomas born biologically assigned man at birth? Leah Thomas is a trans woman. She's a woman who was assigned male at birth. Yes. But you just said cisgender men are assigned male at birth. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about gender identity. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about gender okay. identity. So you're saying that you all support fair sport for women and girls, but as I was trying to explain to you earlier, gender identity, when it is included within the definition of sex, means that you can no longer distinct males and females from one another. Therefore, women and girls cannot be protected on the basis of our sex. And it doesn't matter how a man identifies, it doesn't matter if it's this man, this one, this one, it doesn't matter who it is that was born male, or how he identifies, because of the ways that the laws and policies have changed, any male, regardless of identity, can walk in to women's formerly sex segregated spaces that were supposed to be safe spaces, like showers, bathrooms, public bathrooms, locker rooms. They can come in, take over positions on boardrooms and swim teams. And I'm not talking about Leah, I'm saying any male regardless of identity and that's what the law means so what should we do about that if if the law has been created in such a way that women and girls can no longer be protected on the basis of sex how can we protect women and girls um i feel like you're bringing up a lot of different topics but i just want to say one thing to kind of wrap this up um leah thomas is a woman she's a trans woman and she is a that's woman okay. to um say anything else is simply transphobic and we're not we're, interested in those conversations not, i'm not interested in talking about leah i want to know how women and girls can be protected on the basis of our biological sex i think that's a really interesting thing that you could definitely take some classes on at georgia tech um, so, and here we believe that trans women are women and you're loved and supported and we support Leah Thomas. But how can you support women and girls if you can't define women and girls? Uh, Leah Thomas is a woman and we support her. So I'm not that's talking how. about Leah. I'm talking about your little sister, my little sister, my cousin. I'm talking about these little girls. How do we protect them? I'm not talking about adult males who identify as female. I'm talking about little girls like you know, like you were once, like I was once. How do we protect little girls from adult males who can just say, they don't even have to say anything actually. They don't have to say anything at all. They don't have to identify as anything at all. An adult male is now legally allowed to go into any woman's space or take over any woman's position. Would it be okay if he did that? Um, so I want to say that you're bringing up a lot of points that are just fear tactics, and so they're no. not really logical. Um, I'm going to step away in a little bit, but I just want to say that if you're trans or non-binary or queer growing up, we love you, we support you, um, and Georgia Tech has your back. In this world that we live in, in this country we live in, you can identify as whatever the heck you want. If I want to be known as an Eskimo tomorrow, I think I'll be supported by some people. But when yes, it comes when, when it normalized. when it comes to the aspect of you can identify as you want, but biologically there is an advantage of cis gender males over over females. Can we agree with that? Sure. Yeah, cisgender males absolutely. Um, 
but then that know, would but, then that would make it unfair what's happening inside that building right now with Leah Thomas then correct well sure if, if Leah Thomas was a cisgender male but she's not and I think you have to look at more than just that you know there are women there are lots of biological advantages that lots of women have there are women who are naturally tall there are women who are naturally broad-shouldered Leah Thomas isn't even close to breaking Katie Ledecky's um, record she didn't even beat last year's record which was Four minutes and well, because also formerly known as Will was just about five hundred. Yeah, that's that's why, formally, that's why I said formally. That's why I said formally. That's why I said formally. That's why I said formally, which gets to my point of formerly known as Will was on the men's team for three years. That's the reason I bring that up. And then now it's going by Leah. Race on the men's team, but you don't have to necessarily be. I don't think this should be. But back, but back, but back to the point is someone that was not even that successful when they identified as a male is now number one as a female. How do you respond to that? I mean, there are lots of tall, look, again, to reiterate, that's subjective. Did you, I swam in high school. I've actually talked to a lot of my females from her friends and they actually back Leah on this. Again, there are lots of biological advantages. Michael Phelps is a great example of that. Where if you, if you say that Leah has a biological advantage. Where do you draw the line? And that is that is where the lines get blurred because there are cisgender women who want to compete in the Olympics but have too high testosterone levels and are not allowed to compete in running. So is that how we would break it down then? Like male and female, it's the amount of estrogen you have and the amount of testosterone you have. That's the way you guys are breaking it down? I don't know the correct answer to that, honestly. I feel like a lot of people don't have the correct answer. The truth is there's a lot of unfairness in sports. There's a lot of biological and genetic advantages that some people have and some people don't. Some people are double jointed. Michael Phelps is double jointed. He has an abnormally large wing, wingspan. He has abnormally large lungs. That allows him to compete better than the average man would. And then most males usually have bigger lung capacity than women do. How would you respond sure. to that? But some women also have abnormally large lung capacity than other women. But this is something inherent in, in males then that already before anything oh, is done, any 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 sort of any sort of training or anything like that, that's already ingrained in, in a male. The male. I mean, there are also body. women who actually do have larger lung capacities than men as well. Um, again, it's all subjective, and I get that. I get that you are a clearly a conservative pundit, and you're making these questions. I mean, I get it. I get it. You well, I'm just I'm just team. having. Yeah, I was on the swim yeah. team. You were on the swim team. You said you identify as non-binary. Non so do non-binary males have a biological, physical advantage over women and girls? Yes, and because I'm not yourself? on. Yes, because I'm not on HRT. I'm not taking estrogen or anything like that. So, but if you took estrogen, then that would mean that you no longer have any biological advantage, or would it just mean that your hormones have been changed? Well, it depends. Yeah, you know, hormones affect people differently. Would your and lung capacity change, for example, say? I don't know. Do you know that? Do you know? The, do you have a definite answer that says yes, that? Yes, your lung your lung capacity won't change. What, what statistic can, are you referring to? Can it's you can you back not, it up? No, it's, it's not a statistic. Um, your lung. Please, please cite your sources. Source, dude, trust me. Okay, so if you decide, if you were to come out as transgender tomorrow, and we all were to honor you as a transgender woman. Would you no longer have the same biological advantage that you have today as a non-binary male tomorrow as a trans woman? Um, when does, well, I mean, we'll see. Regulations. That's why, you know, that's why kind of, you know, NCAA has regulations that require trans women to be on HRT for a certain time. So, uh, they have to meet certain hormone standards. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure. Obviously, if I were to change my gender and identify as a transgender woman, I would not be able to compete. Um, so I don't really see where the argument there is, okay. and I'm also not a transgender woman, mm -hmm. and it seems more like the but issue. If it, and back to the point where but you, you could said, be if and you then qu to, question, I, question, I, I couldn't be because I'm not. I couldn't be because I'm not a transgender woman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one question ask be, before I leave, though. And I actually have a question for you. What's your name? Nike Kapazakis. Nike. Mm -hmm. So you have a pin right now. It says "Won't be erased." Explain that. What does that mean? So it means that my non-binary existence. Uh, actually is a break from the binary and that a lot of times we base on these sort of like binary conceptualizations that is truly again we, we talk about like trying to dismantle a patriarchy that is binary binary gender binary sex is a patriarchal concept that does oppress others and by saying that no i'm not going to be erased as a non-binary person 
But there is also reality that I have a lived experience where the vast majority of time, especially in like COVID, especially wearing masks, I get perceived as a woman. I I don't identify as a woman, but I get perceived as a woman. I get harassment so as a woman. Issue could be is that would... we don't know who we don't know how people identify. So we don't know how to keep women and girls safe if women and girls don't know how to identify people. Let me let me follow up to that. Yeah. And the reason I asked you about that, I thought it was intriguing. It's it won't be a race because yeah. there's it's interesting to have the these similar arguments, but have just like different uh, branches to it that you're saying that uh, males are an issue on this side. Cisgender males, if you yes. want, that's what you want to call them. Same thing they're saying over there. You're saying that you don't want to be erased. They're actually saying the same thing same over thing. there as, exactly as well. So saying. when they're saying, when I, when I ask about, you know, won't be erased, they feel the same way because what's happening in there is cisgender women, that's, that's what we're calling them, is they're being erased from the record book. How would you respond to that? How would you respond to that argument? So records change all the time. Leah Thomas's record will not hold. She will be erased from the record books. This is the progress of sports and athletics and the ways in which, especially the ways in which we overwork young athletes to like produce um, all these levels of excellence, right? Like records get erased. That just happens. Leah Thomas's record will be erased in the future and that is just it, right? By, an, by another is, biological man? Would that be okay? Do you think if, a if woman Katie, could beat those times? Yes, actually, right? There's Why have they not? Then why didn't a woman win today? Because a woman, the, a woman did, first of all. Okay. But no cisgender woman won today against uh, Leah Thomas because there just wasn't a competitor of her standard on so the, the field at the time. the rest of the women the weren't good enough. And why might that be? Do you think it had anything to do with biological differences? You can speak May next. I jump in? Okay. I've, Wait, been, I've been I've okay. been an athlete my entire life and I identify as a woman. Mm -hmm. If I'm competing- What does that mean, identify as a woman first? So I personally the choose the she, her pronouns. So and all women I was- get to choose whether they're a woman or a girl? Do all women get to choose? You shouldn't force what about I mean, it comes in, from a stance about forcing gender norms from an early on age, like the whole idea of putting okay. people that are born with the female identifying chromosomes in pink stuff. They have to wear makeup. They have to play yes. with jewelry. It's forcing gender socialization an identity on them from an early age. Agreed. Okay, but, but my question for you then would be. Go back to my yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah, don't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. I'll be so, back in a second. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. But I have been playing sports my entire life, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And if I go up against a team, I know I'm just not as good as them. As an athlete, I'm not gonna be like, oh, just because they're better than me, that means I'm just not gonna do anything. Not like saying any of them didn't just give up because Leah Thompson was out there. It was more, I see someone better than me, let me try harder. Like that pushes you to try harder. And when it comes to terms of like, let's say watching women's sports and men's sports, women's sports gets no attention. And why is that? Why? Because it's the female gaze. A lot of people find men's sports more entertaining because they find more promise. Yes, women's because sports women's no sports is the only one and not getting attention. So we're talking to Kelly J, one of the activists here that had a video just blow up oh online. <laughs> when you were talking to someone that was a Leah Thomas supporter, you said, I know that is not a woman. And then when they went back, said, are you a biologist? And you said, I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. Are you a biologist? Oh my God, don't be ridiculous. I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. You rely on stupid arguments because you don't have an argument. I'm not an astrophysicist, but I know what space is. Talk about what led to that moment. Well, I've been doing this quite a long time, so I'm familiar with the old, uh, are you an expert? Uh, and I think it's just speaking really plainly and truthfully, like we did about five years ago, and not accepting the new, I don't use any of the new language. There are men and women. There's, there's no such thing as non-binary. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a trans woman. Um, I don't use female pronouns for men. I'm really, really rigid. I have to hold the line because I run an organization called Standing for Women. So if I can't hold the line, then I can't expect anyone else to. But Kelly, so many people are going to tell you you're anti-science and they're going to tell it, trust the science, just like they've been telling everybody across the world the last two plus years. You say something like that. There's no such thing as non-binary. It's just male and female. How do you respond to those? 
Well, Galileo was eventually proven right. <laughs> so, so I'm quite happy that I'm right. I'm mm. 100% right. There is not a doubt in my mind. And most people know it, which is why their arguments are so ridiculous. Why do so many people believe these lies? Because you've got a captured school system. Uh, you've got a captured government. You've got really powerful lobby groups like HRC who campaign for atrocious things like men, really violent men into women's prisons. And I think once corporate, once there's so much money in it, it's really, really difficult to resist. So the girls here, uh, they don't just lose their swimming race, right? Mm -hmm. they, they lose their ability to be on the team. They lose their scholarships. They lose their job opportunities. They, they lose all their life chances. Mm -hmm. If they just say, I don't want that man <laughs> swimming in a women's race. So when you talk to people on the other side here, so as, as we talk, there's people on the other side that are for Leah Thomas, and then there's the Save Women Sports here, and everybody that is saying all we're trying to do is protect women in athletics. When you tell them things like that, how are they responding and how are they trying to justify their thought process? Well, I don't think there is one. So they do this circular thing where you say, what is a woman? They go, well, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. And then you say, yeah, okay, so what is the thing they're identifying as? How would, if a spaceman landed right now, how would you describe a woman? Like, how would you d differentiate between a man and a woman? And they just can't get there. I watched a girl a couple of days ago. She looked so emotional at the fact that somebody disagreed, which I think America's, you're doing it on on speed. We're doing it quite <laughs> bad in the UK yeah. of not building resilience, of not allowing differing opinions. But she really, you could see the cognitive dissonance that when I said, what is a woman? She could not, she didn't even use any words. She just couldn't answer. I mean, that's frightening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like that's what we cover here at Turning Point USA is what's going on in college campuses. It's yeah. turned into indoctrination centers. So when all your response is trans women are women, mm -hmm. But I'm getting back to the point of what is a woman. And I know we've talked so much about the abortion debate, too, or they're saying, you know, men on, on your side, if you don't have a uterus, you don't have an opinion. But it's saying also, too, you're saying that Leah is a is a woman and Leah doesn't have mm -hmm. a uterus. So you, it's almost like long division to me. Well, we're like you, you start losing it. And then you're just like, how did I get the wrong answer? You need to go back up to the top mm -hmm. and realize where did I go wrong? And I don't think that's happening on college campuses. Well, it's quite incredible. You evil, privileged, overprivileged white men. <laughs> uh, you can become the most vulnerable group in society. You don't even have to do much, but maybe just change your name or wear a dress. How do you encourage and give people the tools and resources to break this down? Because not everybody's going to think in their mind, no. I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. Well, I got an email from a, a gentleman this morning who said, I've got a daughter. What can I do? And I said, well, you just speak. You talk to your friends, you talk to your community. If you go to church, you talk to your church. You, talk, you go and attend your school board and you talk to your children before anybody else can capture them. And you just do that until you lose your voice because they can't... When a mass sort of psychosis of lies lands upon a nation, it will rely on the silence of so many in order to take its foot take a foothold and that's exactly what it's done so you just have to speak boldly and you know we know we're right we know what the truth is and so we have to be brave and and speak it I know I said that was my final question here's a <laughs> here's a bonus one um, so being from the UK you obviously have a different perspective of the United States I think there's plenty of times here where we just kind of get in our own bubble and we just see the world as just our, our Western mindset, what would you do to encourage Americans to kind of like look outside of themselves and think that like, this isn't just an American issue, this is a world uh, cultural issue? Well, I mean, you just have to look it, the, the, it's a playbook in every country. So in Australia, in New Zealand, in the UK, in Ireland, um, right throughout South America now, it is exactly the same methodology of capturing uh, the institutions. It, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but if somebody just lifted the lid off there and there were five people just playing a game of risk, <laughs> and transgenderism was like the ruin the world thing, or if it was, you know, if there are Chinese bot farms or Russian bot farms, I think this is a pretty good way to absolutely destroy the West. Uh, so to look outside for Americans, I think you just have to listen. I think there's always a good listening and you know, communication, it's the same in every relationship. You just have to keep talking. And then where can people follow you and make sure they support all your work? So many places. <laughs> so I'm Kelly J. Keen on 
uh, YouTube. I'm banned from Twitter since 2018 for saying women. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I did say women don't have penises. I've also been interviewed twice by the British police uh, for saying women don't have penises and transient children is abuse. Um, so Kelly J. Keen on YouTube, uh, Posey Parker on Instagram. Uh, where else am I? I do have a Standing for Women a Twitter account run by someone else. Standingforwomen.com and adulthumanfemale.store. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for everything you're doing here. And thanks for that viral video. I know that's definitely brought some more light and maybe a little bit of humor about what's going on here. Let's hope so. Thanks very much. Well, that's it. I mean, we're still outside of Georgia Tech's Aquatic Center. It's been a lot of interesting conversations. And honestly, there's a lot of times where you're confused and you're trying to figure out, you know, what do, what do they mean? You ask simple questions like, what is a woman? You talk about if you really care about women and you don't like the patriarchy, <laughs> They explain that to us. And there's been a lot of enlightening conversations from both sides. And I think what we got to take away from this is there's a lot of people that really do care about Leah Thomas, but at the same time, they're caring about biological women in sports and trying to protect that at all costs. We got to keep the NCAA accountable. And hopefully this is just starting more and more discussions. Hopefully the NCAA is going to be held accountable and they bring people to the table because that's what we're trying to do is have real discussions and get real answers and get down to the truth. Thanks so much for staying along for this absolutely wild ride.